Okay, hi everyone. So everyone else coming in? Um, I'll just start and hopefully you guys will be able to get a recording of this later on. Uh, so today I'm going to be talking about how to create a content machine. And this is something that I love talking about. It's one of the reasons why I'm up here on this stage. Uh, but first and foremost, Hi, I'm Leanne. I'm an introvert. I'm really scared being up here on this stage, but here I am anyway. I'll use a lot of gestures. I'll try to be hyper. Thank you so much. <laughs> so uh, in this, though, like I said, this is something I love talking about, something I do love sharing with a lot of people. But I did start. Uh, I did start way back in 2011. This was my vlog when I was 15 years old. Uh, and it's been something that I've just been doing. I became freelance writer. I did graphic work. I did, basically, I've been doing work from home since before it was cool. I was using my mom's name to get paid on PayPal. And that was kind of the path that I started with. And now I run my own uh, executive assistant agency to XU. We hire, manage, and train a lot of really amazing executive assistants. And this is something that we've also just been developing. In the last three years, I've created, I, th I think I caught this right, about 3,000 pieces of content. And that's crazy to say, but it's really just because we've developed this content creation machine that makes it so easy for us to be able to do this. So I'm on TikTok, YouTube, i have on, of course, my Instagram, my LinkedIn, everywhere else. Whenever people ask me, like, hey, where can we find you? I'm like, I'm everywhere and this is exactly what I mean and I started with this I started doing five minutes of video a day on for a hundred days so that's why I started with this and I just was on my phone you guys can see a little bit of the blurred background in, in there of that's just how I wanted to start doing this because content creation really has been one of the ways that we've been able to grow into XU and also one of the ways that's just again fun for me to share a lot of the things and it started really with my sisters asking me hey um, ate ate in so word for the day for everyone ate in uh, Tagalog means uh, older sister she would say hey ate how did you do this how did you do that so you'll see you know how to create habits you'll see uh, quick little hacks or living with migraines so I was, I was just documenting the things so then I would get to the point where I'm now standing in front of you not too scared talking on stage so now we produce 15 to 20 pieces of content every week across platforms this is for both my business and for my personal brand so I create two different videos on YouTube I post it everywhere else we repurpose it we put it in different ways and I'm gonna walk you guys step by step through this and if I'm at the end of this if I am able to show you guys how to create a content creation machine I'm gonna ask you guys to do one little thing is that okay Awesome. Okay, so I did this when I started out. I was just using this. It was right in the middle of the pandemic when I started doing YouTube a little bit more. It was September 2020, and I bought this secondhand camera. The, the owner had like a dinged up box of like, oh, um, yeah, I got this somewhere else. And like, here's the microphone and everything else. And I still do this from my room. So it doesn't have to be that you guys have a big studio. You don't have to be have this you know, fancy setup. It's just me on my, and I even started with just, again, on my phone. So you don't have to be, make this really complicated. So uh, I also now just started growing a community of people so we have a Facebook group um, of course I, I earn from YouTube I get affiliate marketing so aside from just the coolness of being able to be a content creator you start earning as well from a lot of the different ways that you can oh. so of course first thing is why create content first thing builds authority you guys are here and building authority because this is something I like talking about when you show up when people Google you and they see like oh this is what they do because you've created content out of it then like okay this this person I can trust so it builds trust really really fast as well second is of course it builds your branding if you look up my name and I'm lucky enough that my name is really unique thanks mom of uh, like it has the dash it has the lie like if you guys look me up it's really easy to see like oh this these this is the thing that she's been doing this is her branding she talks about virtual assistants she talks about content creation this is the thing that she does and of course it's great practice for doing just this I started out again with just my phone talking to it five minutes a day and now I'm talking to you guys here on this stage so great practice for getting to the point where you are building that brand and authority next is it's easiest type of job to get if you're not thinking of starting your own business or your own brand if you're a content creator you know how to create content it's one of the easiest jobs because 
all of the business now, they're turning into creating more content for their businesses. So it's easy for you to, like, hey, I know how to do this. I know how to turn your one big piece of content into multiple types of content. And of course, it's a great introduction to your business. I have gotten so many clients for 2XU from my YouTube business because they see like, oh, she knows what she's talking about. She knows the struggles of having a virtual assistant. So then she's probably someone that I want to work with. So how do you actually start? So first is we start with who are you talking to? Who is that imaginary friend in your head? Who is the person that needs your content, who needs to see it, who would be the target audience for it? So you start with, are they a he or a she or a they? You know, what, what kind of person are they? It's just building that imagery. How old are they? Where do they live? What are their hobbies? And what are the things that they like or hate? So for example, for me, when I started out, I just had my sisters in my mind. They were both the people that I was talking to. I was just, I was talking in my Ate voice and my older sister voice of like, okay, this is how you do it. This is the best way that you can do it. So that's how I started. And now I've evolved, like I'm talking to entrepreneurs. So it's like, hey, how do I hire a virtual assistant? How do I do this? So what is that person? So then in, when you're looking at the lens of the camera or if you're writing the vlog, you're just imagining you're just talking to the person. It's just a conversation. Next is, it goes down to also why are you creating content? Is it to grow an audience? Do you just want to be an influencer? And there's no shame in wanting to be an influencer. It's a cool, it's a pretty cool life to be sent cool swag. I sometimes will just get stuff in the mail. I'm like, oh, cool. Now I get to talk about this thing. Is it to sell a product or service? So again, for me in 2XU, I use it very much to be able to sell our services for hiring and managing virtual assistants. And of course, is it just for fun? Like, do you like just doing it? Like, I know so many people who do this, they just blog about their day, they walk them through, like, oh, this is the thing that I, you probably have heard, like, hello, everyone, this is the day of my life blog, this is the thing that I'm doing today. So that's also good, because then, again, you're just, you're creating and mastering a skill that really does help in a lot of areas in your life. Ooh. Ooh. Froze. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so next is you want to cover what type of content are you trying to make? So first one is text. So it's making articles, social media posts. Ooh, it's a little bit of delay, but there you go. Ebooks or blog posts. So this is the first type of text, uh, the uh, first type of content that people do think of making. It's just making a 500 word article, social media posts, the captions, that is a text type of post. The ebooks, blog posts, and of course we have video, which making um, like long form video, which is usually for YouTube, uh, short, uh, short ones, there you go, vlogs or online courses. Uh, there's also, of course, Oh, there you go. I should point it this way then. <laughs> uh, there's also informational videos, if that's the type of your content you're creating. There's photos, there's uh, creating graphics, posters, stickers, etc. And then audio with podcasts. So these are normally the four types of content that you can create. So out of curiosity, for anyone here, who here has created like text type of content? Amazing, most of the people here, awesome. Um, who here has created video type of content? Good, so then this whole process will also make more sense. Who here creates graphics? Awesome, a lot of creatives in here. And of course, who has done podcasts or audio type of content? Good, and I'm assuming everyone here consumes a lot of this, right? So you're basically creating the thing that your target audience will start consuming and wanting to know, get to know you. So I'm gonna move a little bit here. So here is what platform are you creating it for? So of course, there's for text, for video, for photos and audio, a lot of them do start to interlap because of course, now uh, YouTube just released that they can now do podcasts on your YouTube channel. So it's all interlapping, but it's just coming to know where are, where are the main platforms that you wanna choose. And I always recommend choose one type of content that you wanna start with, and then we can start evolving to the other types of content. So next is one, you want to start creating your topic wheel. Anyone familiar with the wheel of fortune that you spin it? That's how I imagine the content wheel. It's any time that you're stuck on an idea of like, what do I talk about? What are the things that I would be good for this? Is you create the first topic is going to be things that what is something that you are an expert in? Now there's something that everyone here is an expert in. Just think of what are the things that people usually ask me about? Like, oh, like, do you know how to do this? Or can I ask you for your help for this? These are things that you are an expert in. Not everyone, you're, you think you're probably level three, but are level one and two people who need your help, who need your type of expertise. Second topic is, 
what is the pain point with your audience? Again, remember that you had an imaginary friend that you chose of like, what is the pain point? What's stopping them from getting to level three to get to your level? And then third one is just, what is something that's fun for you to create? Because it's always going to be essential that to do this long term that you are doing something that's fun, doing something that's different, doing something like uh, in in uh, this week um, for my vlog post for my YouTube channel, it's this trip. I'm like talking about this. Nothing to do with virtual assistants, nothing to do on how to work from home, but I do this for fun. I do this kind of content. Okay, so next is I'm going to go through different ways to brainstorm ideas, to so hopefully start jogging your guys' brain. So first thing is I do recommend doing a brain dump. So brain dump is just 10 minutes of nonstop writing. So you guys had the three topics. You spin the wheel of like, hey, what's their pain point? What's something fun for me to do? What am I expert in? Just for 10 minutes, what are different blog or vlog that you can create based on those three topics? Just create lists and lists and lists. You don't have to stop yourself. If it's repetitive, don't worry about it. Just keep writing because it's one of the best ways that you can start just thinking about the different topics that you have. Second way is to read, watch, or listen a lot. So earlier I asked you guys if you were consumers of this content, that's how you're able to create more content is by consuming content. Because anytime that someone questions something that you thought was like, oh yeah, let me correct myself, this is actually something that you can do better. Next is, what are people searching for? So there's a lot of different tools that you guys can use for this. There's of course Google search and once it loads, answer the public.com. So Google search, if you search what are, you know, as for example, for me, I would search, uh, what are virtual assistants? If you put an A next to it, it'll, it'll of course pop up the next. You look at what other people ask. You look at what people are wondering. Answerthepublic.com is another free tool that you can use to see, again, what are people asking? What are people looking for? What's the information that they need to be able to move forward? Next is look at lists. You can say top 10 ways to do that. You can search that on Google. You'll see lists on lists of blog posts of other people who already did the research. That's a shortcut for you. And this becomes another type of content that you can create. You can find prompts out there. There's a ton. And of course, Experimenting. There's a lot of different ways that you can start, again, as you're consuming content, as you're seeing what works for other people, you can start putting that into your own machine. And of course, there's always repurposing old content. I'm still looking at content that I did three years ago. I'm like, how can I make this better? How can I improve it? How can I make this into a freebie or a course or a PDF? And of course, I have been addicted to ChatGPT. Anyone else? Anyone else playing around with Chat? There you go. So I have been addicted to it. Um, I have gotten all of our assistants addicted to it as well. Uh, so I've created a really cool prompt, a set of prompts actually, on how to create a year worth of content with ChatGPT. Everyone good with that? Okay, so first prompt is what are 12 bottlenecks for content creators? So what basically, I'll, I usually put X, Y, Z in here. So what are the 12 bottlenecks for your target audience? So for example, uh, this is going to be your content for every month of the year. So bottlenecks could be you know, no tech, it could be no topic, they don't know this system that I'm, I'm teaching you guys. So then this becomes, again, content for every month of the year. So let's say one of them is tech, so that becomes every single week, you're able to put a prompt of give me four ways to solve bottleneck number one, and then bottleneck number two, bottleneck number three. So it becomes this list of topics of content that you can now create every single week for that month. And then you can go ahead and say, give me bullet point script for each of the four ways. Now this is your content for every post. This can become your, uh, your video script. This can be the, the outline for your blog. And of course, then you can ask it, create a LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok video script for each and becomes your repurposed content. It's as easy as that. I'm gonna give you guys a little bit uh, because the next slide is the actual example. So move a little bit here. So here I put, what are 12 bottlenecks of hiring and managing a virtual assistant? This is now content that I can use for the rest of the year. What are, expand with video topics for number one. So it grabbed number one and then gave me four for this is now my weekly content and then bullet points, this is now the content that I will create. So that's how easy it is. You don't have to brainstorm, you don't have to really think too much. It is just that easy, especially with ChatGPT. I do recommend, as always, word of caution, Research as much as you can, double check. It is still a bot, it's not perfect. So double check as much as you can, make it your own voice. One of the things that I even do sometimes is I'll put in like, hey, this is the content that I create. This is my voice, this is a blog post I created, or this is a Facebook post I created. Uh, create a content based on this. So then it learns your voice, it sees like, oh, this is how they, they speak. You can make it, of course, uh, talk about like, hey, this is like a, make it fun, make it funny, make it serious, make it professional. You can make it into different ways. 
ways, because th that's one way that you can start creating the content. So now, this is going to be the how we can repurpose for different platforms. So let's say you've picked already the content that you want to create. You will start with turning text. So every, a lot of people here said that they started with text. So we start with, of course, your blog. So this could be on, of course, WordPress, Medium, LinkedIn. You, it could be a tweet that you did. It could be a Facebook post. You can turn the text into a video. You can use that as a script. You can turn it into bullet points and turn it into a video. And then if you want to, you can make it into audio. You can make it into a podcast episode that you're talking about, the topic that you already wrote about, and then photos. So this then, of course, feeds back into text. So we might be thinking, well, people get annoyed that I'm talking about the same thing over and over again. I am surprised until this day when people are surprised, like, hey, I talk about virtual assistants. That it, even though I talk about it constantly everywhere, there's still going to be people who don't know you, no idea what you do, no idea what problem that you're about to solve for them. And it's really powerful to be able to have and be everywhere. Again, it shows up your branding, shows up your authority, and it just grows more and more. So what this can look like. So creating a content machine. So start with long form content. So this could be a video, a podcast, or a blog that you did. That's one content. That's one piece of content. And this is what I'm about to run you through is actually our, our actual content calendar of how we do this every single week. So we start with long form content. Two is then we turn it into short video. So a video that I did, a 12 minute YouTube video I did, will be broken up to 30, 30 seconds to three minutes, and this will be different types. So then this is a co five content count. This is already on YouTube, Pinterest, uh, because if you don't know, one of the fastest ways actually to grow on, on uh, Pinterest is also video now. There's of course TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. And then you can turn it into a carousel post. A carousel post is, you know those series of posts that you can swipe through? You can turn that also into a PDF. They can post on LinkedIn. In. So then that's another four counts of content becomes a graphic post. So what we usually do is we pick a quote or a really good point about the video and then we post it, of course, in the different platforms and then you can repost it everywhere else. So that is basically what our content machine looks like. So on Mondays, we post this. This is our Tuesday content, our Wednesday content, our Thursday content and our Friday content. That is essentially our content calendar at 2XU and how we're able to create 15 to 20 pieces of content every single week. And again, I do two videos. So I do one for virtual assistants and one for people who want to hire virtual assistants. So then this becomes a little bit even more of a bigger, bigger thing. And again, we repurpose, we even go back to old content and make it better. So what this looks like, again, is I do a video of like, hey, these are different areas so you can train your virtual assistant. And then we go into the short video. This is trimmed out. This is just 30 seconds of what is something that's super fast. So train your virtual assistant to become a project manager. So that's one point of the video that was cut and now put into teaser to the different platforms. And then it becomes into a graphic post of like how to successfully train your virtual assistant. So then again, we grab a quote from it of like, this is like a really cool thing about this. You can learn more about this here. And then it is a blog post. So both we can both go both ways. We start with a blog post, then create video. It just becomes this everlasting machine over and over again. Does that make sense to everyone? How we're able to create this? And again, I, for me, I've gotten to the point where I'm spoiled. I just talk on video for 40 minutes and all of our virtual assistants take care of this. But I did start it with myself. I started doing this all myself. I wanted to create this, this system before I actually gave it to someone else. So now I'm going to ask you guys to do a little quick activity. So create your content machine. So go ahead and open your, your IG, your Facebook, or even TikTok if you guys have it. You just go, and go ahead and open it on your phone. Go to your stories. Take a selfie. So I'm going to pause to have you guys take a selfie qu really quickly. If you guys want to, of course, no forcing. But then you can use, of course, the hashtag. And you guys can also tag me um, and uh, WordCamp Asia, of course. So you can go I'm giving you guys a moment to do that. And then repost the story on other platforms. And you've essentially just created three, post, three types of content right there. If you guys want to even post it on actual, as an actual post, that's another form of content. There's a lot of different ways that you guys can do this and make it super easy for yourself. And of course, later on with your team. So everyone done? Do it. Thumbs up for those who already did it. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so that's just a quick thing. It would be cool to see you guys on social media as well as you guys tag me. I would love to follow guys and see your content. So bonus content creation tip. 
is, of course, hire an expert. You don't, again, I figured this out myself. I'm just a nerd. You don't have to do what I did. I'm just a big nerd about this. But you guys can want to identify the work that you don't want to do. So let's say that you do want to be the face. You want to be the one creating the content. You want to be do, doing the video. So you want to delegate like the editing part. You want to then the, the cleaning up part, repurposing it, making your graphic post, and then create a checklist of what do you want it to look like. One of the best ways that you can do this is if you have someone that you look up to in the industry, you can have your video editor, or your graphic person, or your social media person, hey, look at how they do their posts. I want to do it like this. And of course, then you can hire a freelancer or a full-time assistant to manage and publish the content. You don't have to do this. I only show up 40 minutes. I sometimes even just change and put on a coat so that it looks like it was a different day just for the video. And then I send it off to our editor who then sends it to the social media manager and it gets posted. I don't even know most of the time. They're like, oh, can you share this on your story? Oh, it's already there. Oh, cool. So then it makes it super duper easy if you just let someone else do it as well. So final content creation tips for you guys. First is be consistent. Even when you don't feel OK, if uh, I did it with the uh, 100 days of videos that I did, I did it when I was sick. You saw one of the titles, How to Deal with a Migraine. I did that right after I got a migraine. Because it does help. It, may, it creates your belief that I am this kind of person. Next is just experiment as much as you can. See what other types of content you can create. See what else makes sense for you. And of course, keep learning something new. Again, as more as you create, create and consume a lot of the content, the more content you can also create moving forward. And of course, ask for feedback. Any questions that people usually ask, that means that it wasn't clear enough, you missed something, it's opportunity for a new content that you can create moving forward. And of course, keep records of progress. Like for example, for me, since I kept the record of me doing 100 videos for 100 days, I can show this to you guys. And it's also a really cool thing to show if, let's say you get featured on TV or the news, at least you have something that you can show people of, this is how I started. And that's basically it. Do you guys have any questions at all? Wow. <laughs>